would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Now, during my investigation into Antarctica and different things using Google Earth Pro, I noticed something very odd about where the tip of Argentina, South America, meets the Antarctic Peninsula. It looks as if a giant wall of water came through here and destroyed a land bridge, pushing up land that makes these islands. Now, some thought, well, that's kind of a conspiracy theory, and I don't have any direct proof for it, I guess. But something else caught my eye. This area is very similar to an allegedly fictitious map created for the series Game of Thrones. Now, unless you'd watch Game of Thrones, you wouldn't know much about this, and that's fine, but the vast majority of the story takes place in the area of land that would be missing. We have the Argentine Sea, we have the Summer Sea, the Shivering Sea, that correlates to the cold seas off of Antarctica. So many things just seems like it would be more than just a coincidence. But we'll set that aside for just a second. This idea of Antarctica and South America being connected did a video on it and did some deep dive research. And what I found was very strange. If you go back historically and look at all of the maps that were created of this region, from the 1400s all the way to about 1700, it shows the tip of South America being connected to a landmass at the South Pole. It does accurately show that the southern tip of Africa does not connect to that stretch of land. There are multiple maps showing this. This is the early 1500s, as you can see. South America connected to a mysterious landmass. Africa, not. Here's another map showing the same thing. Once again, another full world map showing South America connected to this landmass at the South Pole, but Africa, not. You would think if they were just inaccurate in their map making, they would be inaccurate all the way around. Some of these maps for their day are quite accurate. Especially this one. This one has Cuba, the Dominican, Puerto Rico, Florida. Let me see if I can zoom in a little better. And once again, as you can see, they're absolutely accurate about the distance between Africa and what we know to be Antarctica. So why would this be wrong? But then something very strange happens in the 1700s. All of a sudden, it disappears. All of a sudden, there's nothing there. There's just the tip of South America, the tip of Africa, what we know to be Australia, New Zealand, but nothing there. And then by 1865, the maps now show this huge channel, hundreds of miles wide, between the tip of South America and what we know to be Antarctica. Now, are you ready to have your mind blown? National Geographic, 15 February, 2022. 
source of mysterious global tsunami found near Antarctica. Now, what was my allegation about the maps? Those of you who've seen this part of my investigation know that in 1700, in Japan, there was the largest recorded earthquake ever known, and it sent a massive wall of water screaming across the Pacific. It's my allegation that it came down here, and there was probably somewhat of a, maybe a little bit of a broken land bridge, maybe just little channels and islands, but easy enough to cross. But this is tsunami came and destroyed all of that. And that caused the change in the ocean currents that led to what we see Antarctica being today, this completely frozen wasteland. And this is, even science admits this, it's not that just Antarctica is at the South Pole that makes it cold, it's that it's isolated, meaning that the winds swirl around Antarctica, preventing any other warmer weather systems from getting in. That's what makes Antarctica frozen. But let's read this article, and let's hear what science has to say for itself. When a mysterious series of tumblers emanated from the uninhabited South Sandwich Islands, scientists all over the world found themselves scratching their heads in confusion. Wait a minute, I thought scientists were never confused. First, a magnitude 7.5 earthquake struck under the islands of British Overseas Territory in the frigid waters of the southern Atlantic Ocean. Three minutes later, a magnitude 8.1 shook the region again. These rumblings, which occurred on 12 August 2021, were not unusual on their own, since the islands sit atop a combative meeting of tectonic plates. The odd part is that they were followed by a tsunami, powerful enough to show up on distant shores along the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Although the swell wasn't destructive, it was the first since the catastrophic tsunami of 2004 to be recorded in three different oceans. Just wait, it gets better. While certain types of earthquakes are known to cause tsunamis, the initial depth estimates for these quakes suggested they were too deep to sufficiently flex the seafloor and push a vast volume of water forth. Quote, It was a big mystery and a big challenge for the seismological community, says um, Zajia, a graduate student of geophysics at the California Institute of Technology, after spending months untangling this enigmatic earthquake sequence, she and, or I guess he, pardon me, um, he and his colleagues, think they figured out what happened. Think they figured out what happened. The team concluded that there were actually five major ruptures that day, the components of a single powerful quake that took place within a few minutes of each other. One of these ruptures, previously buried in the noisy seismic signals, was powerful and shallow enough to trigger the multi-ocean tsunami. By deciphering this strange seismic event, geoscientists can develop a better understanding of blah, 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 blah. To make a guess about whether an earthquake triggered a tsunami. I think the event is telling us more than our tsunami detection systems, more that our tsunami detection systems, pardon me, might not be good enough. The odd series of quakes has also made researchers wonder if we will ever fully grasp, if we will ever fully grasp the many intricacies of our planet. As time goes on and we see more earthquakes, they tend to just get weirder and more complicated. Those are strange words for a scientist to use. Weird, complicated, we don't understand, we're confused. You see, they have to stick with the narrative. Here's their latest definition of catastrophe. You ready for this? Flowers and grass. Yes, that's right. Flowers and grass are the latest sign of a catastrophe. Antarctica is turning green. And there are flowers blooming. And there's grass growing. And for them, it's a catastrophe. It's a canary in the coal mine. What, that there might be more flowers and more grass? Seriously. This is what they're calling a catastrophe. Flourishing plants show warming Antarctica undergoing major change. 
It's literally, they don't even see their own insanity. You go out in your backyard one day, and all of a sudden, it's just totally covered in beautiful green grass and flowers, and you see it as a catastrophe. Antarctica's hidden under ice rivers could play a significant role in sea level rise. Now remember, guys, remember, it's wind, ice, rock, and snow. Completely uninhabitable, other than by maybe some seals and some penguins. Wait until you read this. They were drilling a hole down through the ice, and they found something that forced them to stop. Here we go. You ready for this? Sorry, I had the wrong, wrong article there for a minute. See, what they do is they blast boiling water down, and that's how they drill the hole through the ice. And they ran into something they didn't expect. Drilling through a 500 meter, 500 meters of the ice shelf. And it's right down here. Here we go. One of the discoveries that will keep the team going for some time is a dense community of likely amphipods, which we spotted when we lowered cameras to the seafloor. The swarm was so dense, we first thought there was something wrong with our equipment. So they're trying to drill a hole through the ice, down to this river underneath the ice. And you know what they run into? A massive swarm of amphipods. Basically, shrimp. Basically, feeder shrimp. The kind that you see aquariums feeding their fish. These little tiny shrimp. Swarms so dense, they had to stop what they were doing. This is a, a channel from YouTube, Aquarimax Pets, How to Culture Freshwater Amphipods and Scuds. Now, the only way you would have a swarm that dense is if something was eating them. Because that's how life flourishes. In food chains. You can't just introduce one thing to one area. It'll eventually populate itself out and die from lack of food. So if you have a flourishing, giant, dense swarm of amphipods under 500 meters of ice in Antarctica, what does it tell you about what's living down there? This would be a sign in any other place. They would say this is a sign of a rebounding ecology. But it's Antarctica. So it has to be a catastrophe. Flowers and grass and shrimp are a catastrophe. And the actual catastrophes, they're celebrating. It's just unbelievable. So I'll leave it there. If you would like, Join us over Patreon. One dollar per month could really use your support. Um, I'm sure many of you know I'm not going to waste a whole bunch of your time with it. That channels like this that do real research and look into things directly and ask the pointed questions get shadow banned and turned down. And places like Patreon are the only way that we can keep going. So have a happy, blessed Sunday. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. And we will see you guys next time would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much.
would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.